Yesterday I had a day off. Made a whole bunch of progress on the 85 Nissan here. Got pretty far and then it all kind of went to shit. Uh, thought it was a flat spot, it didn't uh, In hindsight, the whole no windshield thing kind of sucks. Oh no. That's my fiance. Shit. <laughs> Tried to go across the street. And uh, I'm not sure if it's a grounding issue or a charging issue or something completely unrelated. Uh, but she did die. And, um,. Now we gotta see if we can figure out uh, why. Cause she was running great before that. So, do need to get her out of this mud hole and all my trash so we can uh, play with it. So, let's see. So one thing I started doing yesterday was deleting a lot of the emissions junk out of here. Um, cleaning up the engine bay a little bit. And I think the uh, engine was grounding. Sort of through all those extra solenoids and sensors um, and once I removed them it's now lacking enough grounding um, also looks like the fusible links maybe burned up in this thing at one point and someone replaced it with house wiring and wire nuts uh, the alternator was putting out 12 volts I'm not sure if the regulator is bad or if the alternator brushes are bad or if just the wiring is not so hot definitely was not sending any power out to the battery the battery was slowly dropping all day yesterday so gotta diagnose that could also just be the bad grounding through the motor um, so we'll see see what we can come up with I'm gonna add some grounds already started um, and then maybe address this situation. We'll see if uh, she wants to crank again. So did a really, really bad job connecting those. Definitely gonna have to redo it. Um, added a whole bunch of grounds. Gonna have to redo those because I hate messy wiring. You know, crank up the fuel pump. Let's see what she does off the key this time. <sighs> Well, cold, slow crank, but cranking again, so that's a plus. I don't have any starting fluid out here, so we might just give her a couple of jabs on the throttle. Mm. Again. This is, this is the sun. I don't know. I did nothing but turn the key again, and there's that. Got a misfire, I haven't had one of those yet. Dang it. Optimum working conditions. Just scooped this uh, Weber 3838 locally. Pretty pumped about that. One of my favorite aftermarket carbs for these old Japanese turds. Uh, and this adapter plate, I actually haven't the slightest idea where it came from, what model it's for. I've just been toting this thing around for years. I've had it in my last two houses, and now it's here with me here. And I have no idea what model it's for, but as you can see, it's very close to lining up with the Z24 intake manifold. These two literally fit. These two are going to need some walking. Uh, the rest of the plate looks like it'll be good. And this Weber actually was on a 720 previously. Don't have the adapter for it. That would have been too convenient. But it's already got the throttle cable bracket. Um, I believe 
I'll be able to use the factory cable stays on the intake manifold and hopefully we'll be a-okay. Took all the bolt holes out one size up. Um, just use the old rat tail file to elongate these guys and bring the countersink out so that these can sit flush but farther out. So we'll see. Considering I haven't the slightest of what application this uh, probably red line adapter is, I think this is a really, really good BS fitment for getting me really cheaply into this Weber, onto this Z24. Hopefully when I deleted all the emission shit, I didn't uh, make a running issue that I don't know about. Yeah. She'll, uh, she'll work. Got to come up with some gaskets, probably make one for the Weber and RTV between the plate. And then I think I can salvage one of the factory carb gaskets for the intake manifold. We ain't spending no money. All right, so after dark last night, I made this uh, Weber base gasket. You might notice I cut it badly. That's probably fine. Uh, as long as it fits and, you know, it kind of does. It, it fits a little. So, shut up. Uh, hopefully, get this Weber on this thing tonight. Let's see if she'll run. Uh, companies that make these adapters definitely sell a gasket to go between. I don't have a gasket for that. I used RTV. It's probably going to break down every time through the fuel, so who knows? Maybe a huge air leak. But un until then, we'll see. Let's get this carb on. So we got her on there, got to get some fresh fuel line. Uh, looks like the throttle cable bracket will line up. I did elongate these holes to push her that way a little bit. And we are on the very end of the slot just to try to get the cable a little straighter in line. Uh, she does work from the pedal. So I guess we'll get this thing plumbed up and see if she starts. Got some fuel line on it. Guess we'll go ahead and uh, cycle the key to prime the fuel system. Oh yeah. I hear fuel sounds. I know this carb has sat for a really long time, so we'll run it for a second, see if it starts pouring fuel out anywhere. No, she's just doing the thing. Okay, well. Choke isn't hooked up, but uh, we'll see if she'll uh, spin off. Hmm. Starter, no starter. Excellent. God, I fucking love levers. She likes it. Excellent. Let's uh, let's figure out some wiring shit and uh, you know maybe address the fact that this thing looks really bad and has to be in my mud puddle back here because I can't put it in the front yard. Thank you. 
It's doing that thing where it uh, doesn't run anymore. No sweat. Seems like it uh, is just my extremely expensive fuel pump relay wiring had uh, just, you know, come undone. Runs great. I mean, I don't know, maybe. But uh, I can't move it. No traction. Need the weight of the bed again. Got new hydraulics, just uh, not laying in the mud puddle. Did you swap those out yet? They do function. You just gotta give them the old double pump. The, uh, the driver's seat is super comfortable, but it works. Wanted to uh, move her up in the yard a little bit, get out of the mud bog and pit here. Uh, you know, it's a nice shade, dry leaves up there. But uh, these antique 195-75-14s, uh, it says for mud and snow, um, they're radial extra longs or something. Uh, they're definitely not rated for um, wet ground. You know, dang it. I just washed that. I just, just washed that. Well, guess I'll work on wiring, you know. Maybe take that blue door off. I don't know. Well, I, I swear I really was going to dig into the uh, hot side wiring here. But um, I got distracted, got into something way more rewarding. Because possibly the bane of my existence is that... Looking cool is way more important than working good. So, started cleaning. And boy, oh boy, what a difference. Also took the hood liner out. It was falling apart. Didn't want it to fall into my brand new air filter. Uh, so yeah, gonna tuck some of this wiring away. Mount the coils again. I think they'll be happier with the ground. They haven't been grounded since I've been playing with anything. And, uh, Pretty sure this huge harness here can actually go up under the core support and instead of running on top get rid of these big clips keep cleaning keep cleaning keep probably not clean that keep cleaning yeah tuck some of these wires away should look a lot nicer run better no absolutely not Harder to diagnose if I have problems? Definitely. But it'll definitely look better. Yeah. That's better. Still haven't touched any of this. Just the sides. Got rid of a lot of wiring on this side. Uh, it's just relocated. I don't like cutting anything out of the harness permanently. Um, haven't even played with moving stuff around over here. Um, I don't know how in depth I'll get. This doesn't need to be a whole wire tuck. Just uh, cleaning up the bay. I'm trying to show some of that uh, white pink that's left. Getting that harness off the firewall really, or the core sport really helped. Still runs. Anytime you want to move a bunch of potentially important wiring around, you want to make sure she's still. Uh, runs before getting too far onto a different task. Uh, got the coils mounted over here, actually mounted, so they should be grounded a little better. And, uh, yeah. Once I can get her up in the driveway, I think I'll pay more attention to uh, actual cleanliness. Still got to rectify the no charge issue. And I actually need to look into the fuel pump wiring. But really, all I want to do is suspension and get the bed back on. While I was out yesterday, picking up the Weber for this thing, I was mighty close to Summit Racing. Obviously, I had to stop in, thought I'd pick up some wiring stuff. I didn't, it was way too expensive. Cheap, cheap, cheap. So, they did have their scratch and dent stuff out. And on that rack, I found a pair 
of KYBs. I don't buy a name brand. Pretty cheap guy here. They uh, they retail at uh, forty bucks. They were fifteen bucks each. Not bad. Thirty for a pair of shocks. They're very very close to the fronts on this truck, but also the 720 actually uses I to post on the rear shocks, which is kind of unusual. Uh, most trucks are eye to eye. Uh, so the way I plan on lowering this truck would be nice to run shorter rear shocks and act as kind of a limiting strap. That way, if I want, I can do the exhaust under the axle. And when you jack the thing up, the uh, axle won't come down and take out the exhaust. That being said, the exhaust actually looks pretty meant to me. I might just leave it as it is. It's probably fine. Yeah. But it did drive with the Weber. I got it up past the mud bogging pit there. Just needed some momentum. Yeah. Finally did it. I actually dealt with the feasible links. Cleaned up this side. Still haven't touched the motor. So we got the back of the firewall. But wiring is much, much cleaner. Uh, you might wonder why I didn't pull that. I do plan on trying to get the AC back going in this thing. I live in Georgia. It's like a million here. It's hot right now and it's winter time. So, you know, AC is cool, especially on $250 beaters. It's extra cool.